Hi everyone, Janice Self and Aline, and in this video, I am going to be sharing from the subject what Jesus' feeding of the 5,000 can teach us as we pursue our purpose. I am so excited to be filming this video. I cannot begin to share um, how profoundly the Holy Spirit was calling me to speak about um, this topic and to speak about these uh, passages of Scripture. They're not unfamiliar passages of Scripture, and yet the Holy Spirit was kind of calling me to tie these Scriptures into uh, purpose, calling, assignment, and um, the Scripture kept showing up over and over again within a period of three or four days. I think I saw it like four times. And so I really just love when the Holy Spirit punctuates a point and makes it really kind of like abundantly clear that this is um, the area and the topic from, from which I should be speaking and sharing. And so I'm really thrilled to be here doing just that. And so... Um, First off, when I first was feeling these promptings from the Holy Spirit, I kind of was a little surprised. I, I, I'm almost embarrassed in saying that I initially felt like uh, speaking from this topic almost felt a little bit simplistic to me, and no sooner did I think it, <laughs> did, uh, did I then kind of repent and say, no, just the fact that you thought the thought means you have to go back. And, um, and read it again because there's something that the Holy Spirit is wanting for you to glean and share from, from these scripture passages. And, um, and God's word is alive and active. Um, and so no matter how many times you see or read something, it will, it, it, there's always an opportunity for it to hit your spirit in a different way based on where you are in life, based on what your life circumstances are, based on what you may be experiencing in life. And so, um, after suspending that initial sort of opinion, I did go back and I, I read through um, all of the, 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 the scripture passages um, connected to Jesus' feeding of the 5,000. This is found in, in all of the Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and I read all of them. Um, and I wanted to kind of glean um, what the Spirit of the Lord would be, would have me, um, uh, you know, see, and, and, and what the Spirit of the Lord would have me share. And, um, and just for reference, by the way, um, so the scriptures in each gospel, so for, for the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew's account of, of Jesus feeding Jesus feeds the 5,000 is Matthew 14, uh, verses 13 through 21. In the book of Mark, it is Mark chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. In the book of Luke, it is Luke chapter 9, uh, verses 10 through 17. And in the book of John, it's John chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. And so I, I, I read through all of these uh, scripture passages and studied them and I just was so eager eager to know um, what what was going to be packed uh, within this what insights were, would be available for me to unpack and there was so much there was so so much I'm not I'm not going to even cover everything uh, in this video I'm going to break this video uh, or this topic into several videos uh, today I'm just going to cover three th uh, three elements or aspects that were unveiled, and then I'll probably do uh, two additional videos because it's amazing how even though this was such a um, it, it's it, it's not a, a very lengthy um, uh, these passages of, of scripture are not very lengthy, and yet. There was just so much revelation, so much revelation, and I want to cover it all. Um, I love that. I love that. Here 
here I was being so kind of like hesitant and then I was like oh wow now I see why the Holy Spirit wanted me to to do this um, and, and as I mentioned before you know a scripture does say the word is active and alive the word of God is active and alive sharper than any double-edged sword it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow it judges the hearts and attitudes of the heart this is from the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 and so this is why um, God's word can hit your spirit in such a different way based on where you are and in different seasons of your life and obviously even though I've read this before look how much became unveiled for me particularly as it relates to purpose and calling and so I'm excited to be sharing all that here so diving right in um, so just a little bit about uh, Jesus' feeding of the 5,000. This is really, um, just in short, the scripture is really speaking to a crowd that had previously witnessed Jesus performing healing of the sick. And they basically set out to, to follow him, uh, you know. And when Jesus, no he, he noticed the crowd while he was on the mountaintop um, with his disciples. And rather than sending them away, he basically performs uh, a miracle. Uh, with five loaves and two fish, um, and he basically, uh, through this miracle, is able to feed the 5,000, and it's really more than 5,000. I mean, when the 5,000 is really probably just the men alone, um, but there were women and children there, so um, this may have even been upwards of like 13, 14, 15,000 people when all was said and done, but it was 5,000 men. Um, and so, um, the first element that I, or aspect that I want to share about in what became unveiled for me, um, with the scripture reading and the scripture reading specifically as it relates to, uh, purpose and calling, this these scriptural uh, references or passages really made it so clear how important it is to have the balance between carrying out God's work, uh, fulfilling one's purpose, calling, mission, and really also experiencing moments of rest and renewal. We see in this these scriptural passages how excited the disciples were to share with Jesus all that they had um, done and accomplished on their mission and all that they had taught. And Jesus really cared for them and their, for their sense of well-being after they came back to report on all that they had done. And, and he encouraged them to get away and to rest. Um, and so after they had accomplished their mission, Jesus took them away to do just that. And, you know, we see in the Gospel of Mark how, um, how Jesus called them to, to be able to allow themselves to be rejuvenated. He said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. This is uh, Mark chapter 6 verses 29 and 30 and so what I was able to see through this is is how much Jesus cares for us too and how much he wants for us too to also experience the balance between our purpose carrying out our mission carrying out our assignment and also being able to experience rest renewal uh, and, and, and you know in order to really be able to be effective at what we're being called to do. And so this was very, very powerful. So this was one powerful insight that I was able to glean from this scripture as it relates to purpose and calling. Um, another really powerful element that the Holy Spirit was showing me through these scriptural passages is how important it is to allow compassion to be a part of that guiding element of our purpose. How, as 
we carry out our purpose, our calling, to allow compassion to lead the way in that effort. And, you know, we see the compassion of Jesus towards the crowd. They were excited to follow him. They, they, they were pursuing him. And Jesus really could have turned them away. I mean, he really could have, um, he, he, he could have turned them away. In fact, the disciples actually um, suggested that. They, they, when they saw the masses, they, said, you know, they thought to themselves, there's no way we're going to be able to accommodate all of these people, send them away. We see in the book of Matthew, as evening approached, the disciples came to him, Jesus, and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. This is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 15 and 16. In the book of Mark, we see a similar sentiment. By this time, it was late in the day, so the disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. This is Mark chapter 6, verses 35 and 36. And so the, the disciples were, they were ready to be gone with this crowd. And yet Jesus didn't send them away. He, he had compassion for the crowd and he basically, instead of turning them away, he welcomed them. Uh, he spoke to them about the kingdom of God. He performed healing for those that were in need. And in addition to all of that, he would ultimately um, feed the masses that were there uh, through multiplying of, you know, five loaves and two fish uh, offered through a little boy. He would perform this miracle that would ultimately be able to feed and accommodate everybody. And so we see, you know, this sense of compassion and it's a beautiful reminder to us as we carry out the Lord's work, God's will for our life, God's calling upon our life with our purpose and our calling to be able to do the same. And um, the last element that I um, wanted to focus on that kind of became uh, unveiled is, you know, we see through the lack of faith of the disciples that oh, there are levels to this. There are levels to this faith thing. And even the disciples who had been uh, spending time with Jesus, who had witnessed Jesus perform miracles, even they had diminished faith in how they were going to be able to accommodate the crowd. And, um, you know, we see in the book of John, um, Philip answering Jesus, because Jesus knew what he was planning to do. Jesus knew full well that he was planning on performing this miracle, but he was kind of testing Philip and, and asking, you know, well, well, where could we go to, to, to buy bread to feed the crowd? And Philip was like, are you kidding me? And not just Philip, but but other disciples too, although they're not specifically identified, but they were like, wait a minute, we, there's no way we're going to be able to do this. So in the book of John, we see Philip answered him, it would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. This is John chapter 6, verse 7. And the Gospel of Luke offers another account. They answered, they, so we know that Philip was not alone in, in his uh, lack of faith. They answered, we only have five loaves of bread and two fish unless we go and buy, buy food for all this crowd. This is Luke chapter 9, verse 13. The Gospel of Mark offers another account. They said to him, that would take more than a half a year's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? And then, of course, we see in the Gospel of Matthew, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Matthew chapter 14, verse 17. So we see that even the disciples
people who were kind of moving about with Jesus were experiencing a deficit in their faith. And this circumstance was really an invitation for their own faith to be strengthened. And as we navigate life, as we navigate the answering of our own calling and, you know, the answering of our own calling on our life and, and, and our own purpose, we too will have moments where we question uh, uh, many different elements to the journey, whether it be our level of skill, the resources uh, available to us, and this is an invitation to also allow our own strength to be, our own faith to be strengthened as we uh, step into our purpose and our calling. And so um, these elements were so powerful and there's more for me to share. I'm going to be sharing more. Um, in, I'll probably do two more videos. Uh, I'm, as I mentioned before, there's so much to unpack. So I'm going to, to to do at least two more videos where I share um, more elements to uh, the insight and wisdom from these uh, scriptural passages and how they connect and what the Holy Spirit was sharing with me, um, you know, not only for myself as as I pursue my, my, my purpose and, and my assignment, but also for, for you um, and how this all connects and ties together. So um, stay tuned for more videos concerning this. And um, I, I definitely want to pray before I close this video that uh, God will uh, bless uh, anybody that watches this video uh, offer wisdom, insight, revelation, courage, and anything else that may be needed. Um, and so let, let me pray before before I end this video. Spirit, Spirit of the Living God, thank you so much for this moment to be doing this video, to be sharing what you impressed upon my heart. You spoke so clearly and so um, uh, passionately about what you wanted me to share. Uh, the the you punctuated this point uh, with regards to this scripture and tying it into purpose and calling and so I just you know I just pray that um, anybody that watches this video will be blessed I pray that you will just um, allow yourself to be seen through my words because this isn't really me this is really you and I'm simply the vessel and please bless those who may be watching this video, those that may be stepping into their calling purpose, those that may be exploring their calling and purpose, I pray that you just give them all the wisdom, insight, clarity, that you just order their steps, that you just suspend any fear, doubt, worry, confusion, um, and that you just be with them and order, order their steps uh, in every moment in Jesus' name, I pray. And so, um, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it to be helpful and useful. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Please feel free to like it, to share it. Um, please subscribe to this YouTube channel um, so you don't miss out on any other videos that uh, I may do as more videos become uh, available. Please um, press the notification bell. This way you won't miss out on any new content, any new videos that I release. And um, thank you so much for being here. I, uh, I'm also on Facebook, Instagram. I have my Faith and in Inspirational blog. Um, I'll leave all the links to these um, other platforms in the uh, description below. I'd love to connect with you there as well. My Instagram handle is at Janice Delphin Aline. My faith and inspirational blog is www.janicedelphinaline.com and I am on Facebook at Janice Delphin Aline with no hyphen between the Delphin and Aline. So with that being said, I'll see you on the next video and take care.